Well, first of all, what was your impression of, of the governor last night? You know, I was confused. It was very quick. Y'all know it was about a 12-minute speech. He said early on, and by the way, that's just over 2,000 words. This was the shortest piece of over-the-top bad news I've heard in my career. That's for sure. Yeah. He started in the beginning saying, I'm not going to say the sky is falling. And then when he was through, he had gotten through saying the sky was falling. So I was confused. Oh, so, so is the sky falling? No, not at all. And look, let's remember, what people who really pay attention understand is that there is a ton, and I mean 10, 15 percent of general fund spending that is the very kind of stuff that you keep hearing from John Kennedy. Those are real things. All the contract patronage, all the, the people that are hired that shouldn't be. This isn't like when we went through this with Buddy Romer back in 87, 88. People now know that government has grown beyond our wildest nightmares. So that's what he was up against, and I think he decided, it's a very bad political move if you want to serve a second term, but I think he decided if I'm going to get past all of that stuff about how bloated state government is, like having way too many colleges and universities, then what I'm going to have to do is just scare everybody to death. And I'll be sure and hit people who have tops scholarships for, the, that is, both the students and their parents. I'll scare everybody about health care. And I will unleash all of the forces that love having three universities more than the state of Florida has. Mm -hmm. So he made the decision to just absolutely be a tax and spender. I give him credit for being true to himself. Let me ask you this, because thousands of people listening to you now are worried about tops. And that's all I got bombarded with this morning was parents with kids on tops. What is going to happen with that? Is it going to be resurrected and saved? Of course. And by the way, in the paper this morning, the advocate in Baton Rouge, the person in charge of TOPS is quoted in an interview, everybody can go online and see it, saying we had already told the governor that we're at a place in calendar year where we can just coast. So that's what they really told the governor. The governor immediately, quote unquote, cut off TOPS. That is totally what gives John Bell Edwards and Jay Darden away. Tops isn't going anywhere except maybe being cut some, which is what everybody's been arguing for except Bobby Jindal for the last 10 years. Mr. Elliott, would you at least give Governor John Bell the credit for being in last night's speech? Ideologically sincere, or is he being, I don't want to say diabolical, Machiavellian, in the sense that he's saying to Louisiana, give me what I want or somebody's going to get hurt. To thy own self be true is what the speech was. He proved who he is. He stuck to it. We give him credit for that. He is a tax and spender, died in the wool. My problem with everything he did is this. He knows that he's playing the nastiest political game you can play. He was winking and nodding all the way through it because he has John Alario as his trump card. He knows when all of this stuff goes to a conference committee, he's going to own that conference committee. And that's the part that senators in Louisiana, and there are only 39 of them, they've got to decide how they're going to beat that if those senators really are for cutting the size of government in Louisiana, which everybody knows has to be done, or are they just going to back the same old 40 years worth of what John Alario and a Democrat governor wants to do? Let me ask you this, because I, I, I was listening to him last night, watching intently, and I thought, you know, he's being, he's being himself until he got to the LSU football part. Yeah. And I yeah. thought, that's really over the edge. Does anybody really think that's going to happen? That truly was a scare tactic, and he should have left that out. Well, he should have, and Aaron, that's very important for everybody to remember because that also shows that he is not a very good politician. He proved in several ways, depending on the constituency, and LSU football is the largest constituency in this state, he proved to everybody, one way or another, that, hey, y'all, we got to cut about $2 billion worth of spending. He also proved that he didn't mind just flat pandering and saying things that people know are never going to happen. He gave himself away, and that's why he gets a D politically for what went on here. 
We'll judge the content of the whole program three weeks from now, three weeks and a couple of days. But he must know what he's going to do for what would have been his second term. I can't believe anybody who's running again four years from now would have given the speech he gave. What, our last question, what is in jeopardy in Shreveport Bossier as you see it today? I don't see anything specific in jeopardy. I mean, let's just put it very, very clearly. If, for some crazy reason, he decides to double down and close the Health Sciences Center, he will have his own political constituency attacking him. That facility, those hospitals which he threatened, have at their base people who are served who are John Bell Edwards' constituency. It was like he literally didn't mind telling his own people, look, I'm just going to include y'all in this because wink, wink, nod, nod, y'all know I'm not telling the truth. That's not the way it works. Some of them might think he's telling the truth, and they're going to wonder who in the heck they elect. Mm -hmm. Elliot Stonecipher, can't thank you enough for your candid answers. We appreciate your time, sir. Thank y'all. Take care. You bet.